Hello everybody and welcome back to In My Shed. I'm BC. Here we have a shorter piece of boiler pipe up in the old mechanical hacksaw. Uh, I have removed another piece. It was a bit ungainly to set up there using the engine crane so I cut two sections off. I'm now cutting a third section and then I'll cut the two sections in half just to get it down to manageable sizes. makes it easier to store up on the pallet racking etc. So it's very difficult work. I'm making sure that the offcut that comes off doesn't crash to the floor. I don't have a roll out table, worse luck. It's a bit of a difficulty. But we'll get the machine running and give you a look. I won't bore you too long, it takes about 15 minutes for the cut. It's a big old grunt when it's going. Lots of clicky clack and odd noises. But it's probably nearly as old as me and still works quite well. And I can do up to about 200 mil diameter pipe with it. 219 just pushes it beyond the first one. Another one of my dinosaurs in action. I love this old machinery. All for now. Hello everyone. Before I start the main video, here's a quick look at the top of the gearbox for the feed for the facing slide. You can see two little button oilers. That's the only way the top differential gears get their lubrication. If they get stiff, the differential action just doesn't happen. So make sure you lube those if you've got an old Model S like mine. Well here we are guys, back in my shed on BC. I want to do some facing work with the borer and the feed for the slide wasn't working correctly. At the back there are two belts, sorry two pulleys in the belt. And it's a very unusual belt in that it's made out of about a quarter inch wide leather sections all glued together. I can't remember the fancy name for it. And that is the device that is allowed to slip if the head should reach the end of its travel or for some reason jam up. But mine's slipping all the time now. Interestingly, as I undid the bolts for the facing head, the feed suddenly starts to work. So it is a bit of resistance inside this head that is causing the problem. Now there's two clamping plates, one either side, that fit in here with a cap screw through the middle. And therefore securing uh, the slide where it is gives you a little bit more rigidity so that it doesn't play around on you. This is the lock that slides in to lock the slide in the central position. I'll drop that down. Now I'll just take the last screw out and lift the mechanism out and then this will come off. You'll see what feeds, feeds it in behind. Oh, there goes the arm key. That's not much good. Now also there is a short uh, socketed cap screw that goes in there to lock the slide to the feed nut. I couldn't find it. And that was protruding above the surface so the uh, snout bar holder couldn't slide over the top. So I made one of these screws a special screw and I can find it later on by Finding the one that's been ground on the head. There's a little sliding plate. Just slides backwards and forwards inside the keeper plate. So it's quite a simple mechanism. I can get it off without retrieving the Allen key. Good. Good use for an old pizza tray. Another keeper plate, and now the slide comes out. It's as I thought there was only one possible position that this slide could go, so I don't know where the hell it's going wrong. Okay, we have a little pinion. That's on the end of the drive shaft that comes through from the rear feed mechanism. Drives a bevel gear here, and that's a bronze lead screw. Move that pinion. Now it's all working bloody wonderful now that it's apart. There's a forward and reverse lever on the back that engages power feed. And in that case, this uh, bevel gear is powered 
by the feed gearbox on the back. It's quite a difficult mechanism to get your head around. It's an unusual differential setup. Uh, upper and lower feed and a little transverse shaft in the middle. I'll never be able to explain it to you fully. And there's no way that I can add any clearance to it or change the clearance that I know of. The plate with the slide can only go in one place where their groove is. So I can't have the plates back the front. And I can't have the slide back the front. I'm going to have to do a bit more measuring and see if there's something I could have done wrong. Looks like that's below the surface as well. It's got me stymied. Okay, won't drag you on for too much longer, but there's a gander in the back of the feed plate. Back again on the borer, I found a few surprises, and big surprise this is a war finished machine, and the war had been over for 20 years. I don't really like what I see. These are the two slide faces and plates and this is a mating surface and it's just rough milled, not even brown. Same on the other side. Another thing I found is previous owner to me has been pounding the hell out of the front face of the slide. Why? I don't know. But it's wallowed up the side of it a little bit so I'll have to lap that back and do a bit of a fit. But I don't think that this machine has ever operated properly and my digital calipers gave me a bit of a clue. That pinion there is about 15 thou longer than the depth of the hole. Now it's not a flat bottomed hole, it's just been drilled, but they've pulled up about 15 thou short. And that's lifting this face here above the front of the borer head. So it's been fouling underneath the slide plate and it was never meant to work. Ever. I did clean this up on the surface grinder when I had it off, but I only took about one thou off if that. Not enough for it to bind up. But you can see that there's a burr down inside the hole. It's a conical hole. So they just rough drilled it, not flattened it out. And that last flattening operation is probably what would have saved that. But you can't have the hole too deep it will pull that up against the nut so it's a very very fine balancing act. If I put the base of my little square across it's not proud on the surface it looks like it fits very very well so I think I'll just have to take a very very small bit out of there probably only two or three thou But if I put that up like that, hello, I might have fixed it. I did try and scrape around the inside of the hole and I thought I removed a bit of poo from in there. So I take what I said back, Kearns. Might have just been a little evil piece of poop down the hole. But it's still not finished. There's a section that looks like it might have been reamed after it was drilled. And there's a step in there. And that step is just not deep enough to hold that. This will be a careful bit of machining. I can't go too far. Otherwise I'll have to put a shim to bring it up. Hmm. Back next week and see what we've done. Please like and subscribe if you think I'm doing a good job. Back again, thought I'd put a bit of a sequel in. I did a Christian thing today, like the loaves and fishes. I made one dressing stone into two, just by a drop test. 
A um, bit more of a surprise, everything is selective fit on this. Even your two clamping plates will only go in one position. Obviously someone didn't mill a slot long enough. So it goes in selectively. It works perfectly by hand now. So next weekend, we'll mount up the facing cutter and I'll put the boiler tubes up here and face off the ends to get them um, finished. I won't do it on the lathe because I haven't made up a 150mm uh, centre and piece of wood yet like I did for the 8 inch tube. That will come in the future. Bye for now.